Now, former employees of Twitter Africa who were laid off as part of a global cost-cutting measure after Elon Musk's acquisition had not received any severance pay more than seven months since leaving the company. This is according to CNN reports. The reports say in late May, the former employees who were based in Accra accepted Twitter's offer to pay them three months worth severance and the cost for foreign staff and legal expenses incurred during negotiations with the company, but they have not received the money or any further communication. The former employees say they reluctantly agreed to the severance package without benefits, even though it was less than what colleagues elsewhere received. Carlo Olympio is lawyer for the former employees. She now joins us live via Zoom for more. Carla, I'm grateful for your time. How many former employees are affected by this? Uh, hi, um, good afternoon. I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear, Carla. Okay, so um, we are representing 11 former employees. The office was a very small office. It had been opened about a, you know, a year before. So it's 11 people. So how much were they to receive in the severance and were you aware of this offer prior to the acceptance? Uh, yes, we have been representing the uh, the team, the team members who were laid off. Um, they were essentially made redundant in November. I'm sure everybody has seen worldwide the news about Mr. Elon Musk taking over Twitter, laying off thousands of employees. Um, so yes, we were representing them. Um, and without getting into numbers, uh, it was uh, just a three-month uh, severance which was assured to everybody worldwide. I think it's important to make a note about that. And also that, you know, our own labor laws require uh, there to be negotiations with employees and severance paid when there is a, an exercise like this undertaken by a company. Hmm. And, and has Twitter explained why there's non-payment of the severance for your clients? So, well, so to be specific, um, we have engaged uh, in a negotiation with them um, on, well, with their representatives here, with their lawyers here on behalf of our clients since November last year. So since the end of last year. And um, the negotiation already took a very long time, which has taken a big toll on my clients, as you can imagine, because some of my clients were based here, but some were actually brought in from other countries, including some with young families that they brought here, put in school, etc. None of them has been paid one cent, one peswa so far. So, um, yeah, the, the thing is, we got to the end, said, OK, we're agreeing on this package. At that point, you need to move forward, sign a settlement agreement. And since then, which was, I think, about the end of May, essentially we have not had any feedback um, and I think it's important to be clear to, to say that it's not that we're not hearing anything from their lawyers if we send an email to their lawyers and say can we get some feedback we you know we just get no feedback from their clients that's the thing do, do you get a sense that Twitter is actually unwilling to pay uh, because we know that they've paid uh, some in other countries apart from those here well, let me put it this way. In my experience, it's unusual if you have engaged in a, in a settlement discussion that has come this far and essentially agreed to terms, come to an agreement, and then the other party just goes silent for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. And um, yes, you say that Twitter has paid other people in other jurisdictions. They have paid some people, but there are lots of people that they haven't paid at all. Um, we know that in New York, for example, there's a, a recent class action suit being brought for, uh, you know, on behalf of all employees who haven't been paid. So there are many employees in many jurisdictions who have not been paid, even though, yes, some have been paid in other parts of the world. Mm. So, so um, Carla, what are you praying the court to do in this instant case? So it's not a court case. Uh, so far, we were just, you know, we were just engaged in a, in a negotiation because under our Labor Act, there is a procedure to be followed. You know, uh, companies, companies are supposed to negotiate with employees and attempt to come to a settlement in a redundancy. So, so far, there's been no court case. Um, and to be honest, my clients were reluctant to take that route for, for many reasons. But at this point, 
we are now uh, exploring causes of action in other jurisdictions and Ghana, along with partner lawyers, because, I mean, it really appears to us, uh, we have not been told this explicitly, but it appears to us that it is likely that Twitter Ghana Limited is not you know, willing to move forward and, and, and make good on this payment. So, so if you finally conclude or take that decision to go to court, what remedies would you be seeking from the court? So if we do, if we do, uh, we will definitely be asking for the severance that has been already been promised to my clients, their cost of engaging in this, the cost of repatriating people and families that have come from abroad and potentially other reliefs. Uh, because like I said, at this point, we're exposing causes of action elsewhere as well. So those will be the main things that we're employing and then other things that, you know, we will look for as well. Wish you the best of luck. Carlo Olympio is lawyer for former Twitter employees who say they've not been paid their severance, those in Ghana. Now, rest <music>